Good morning. Welcome again to another Sunday morning service. We welcome you all, those streaming on YouTube and those on Facebook. We're happy to be here this morning. We're happy to be able to come into your home. We give continue to give thanks and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm going to read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I'll be reading from verse 11 through to verse 21. I've been making a fool of myself, but you forced me to do it when you should have been speaking up for me. I may be nothing at all, but I'm as good as those super apostles. When I was with you, I was patient and worked all the powerful miracles and signs and wonders of a true apostle. You missed out on only one blessing that the other churches received. That is, you didn't have a support to me. Forgive me for doing you wrong. I'm planning to visit for the third time, but I won't make a burden of, of, of myself. What I really want is you, not what you have. Children are not supposed to save up for their parents, but parents are supposed to take care of their children. So I will gladly give all that I have and all that I am. Will you love me less for loving you too much? You agree that I wasn't a burden to you. Maybe that's because I was trying to catch you off guard and trick you. Were you cheated by any of those I sent to you? I urged Titus to visit you, and I sent another follower with him. But Titus didn't cheat you, and we felt and behaved the same way he did. Have you been thinking all along that we have been defending ourselves to you? Actually, we have been speaking to God for followers of Christ. But my friend, we did all for your good. I'm afraid that when I come, we won't be pleased with each other. I fear that some of you may be arguing or jealous or angry or selfish or gossiping or insulting each other. I even fear that you may be proud and acting like a mob. I'm afraid God will make me ashamed when I visit you again. I will feel like crying because many of you have never given up your old sins. You are still doing things that are immoral, indecent, and shameful. I've just read Paul's concern for the Lord's followers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again we come before you humbly. Father God, we are so thankful for another day. We're thankful for your mercy, God. We're thankful for all that you have done, all that you're doing, and all that you are about to do, God. We pray, Lord God, that our hearts and minds will be directed, directed in serving you and lifting up your name. We ask, God, that you just come into our homes, in our hospitals, God. Bless us, Lord God, and bring healing to those that suffer, Father God. We ask, Lord God, that you just cover us with your Holy Spirit. Guide us. Be with us as you always are, Lord God. But so far, Lord God, we are, we, are, we, are, we are just feeling nervous. We are feeling uncertain of the times. But we know that you have us. You have always been there. And you said you will never leave nor forsake us. Father God, we ask and a blessing to all those that call upon you. Those that are suffering, those that are hungry, those that are homeless, Lord God. Many people are jobless, Father God. And we so hope, Lord God, that you will bless them bless them with resources that they will be able to use to continue the building of your kingdom. Father God, we are so thankful for all the preachers, Lord God, as we come together once again to open your houses of worship. We're thankful, Lord God, for this blessing that you have provided us and we'll continue to build on that, build on that foundation that you have given us, Lord God. Bless the pastor of my church, Brown Memorial Baptist Church, Lord God. Bless the family, Lord God, all those that are leaders in this church and those that provide us with this stream. Father God, let's bless them as they continue to bring your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. And good morning. We want you to join on with us as we sing this hymn. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a full taste of glory divine. Amen. Spirit washed in his blood. Oh. 
bunch of reading is taken from Romans 8 verses 28 through 39 and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose for those God for, foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he may be firstborn among many brothers and sisters and those he predestined he also called those he called he also justified those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any change against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardships or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all the day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Together. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So at this time, my friends, we're going to collect and raise up an offering. We need to remind ourselves that ministry continues at Brown Memorial Baptist Church. There's no reason, no matter where you are, for you not to continue to be a responsible steward. We ask that you would consider your tithes and your offerings. You can either send them to our website, which is brownmemorialbaptist.org, or you can send them through the mail. 484 Washington Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11238. We ask that you would consider that God has blessed you and you ought to be a blessing to God's kingdom. It is now time for our offering. God provides, so why do I worry about my life? When you come to my rescue a thousand times, every other voice it is a lie. God provides, God provides in ways I can't explain or can't deny. The little that I have, be multiplied. Down on you and test. 
test everything you thought you knew. Now you finally see what God can do for you. So tonight, close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. Watch God provide. It's hard to say when there's no food to eat or when you don't know what your life will be. And will this be another year of misery for me? But my faith can't survive just on the things I see. Merciful and eternal God, we ask for your blessings even one more time. We're thankful for this opportunity to share your word. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless your preacher and hide him behind your cross. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless those who would hear the words of Jesus. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless us, especially during a time like this. We pray for justice and equality. We pray, O oh God, for health and good health. We ask, oh God, that you would send a special blessing for those who work in hospitals, for those who care, for those who cannot care for themselves. We bless your name, and we're thankful for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our text this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark, reading from the contemporary English version, Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. The Gospel of Mark, first chapter. 1 through 7. This is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It began just as God had said in the book written by Isaiah the prophet. I am sending my messenger to get the way ready for you. In the desert, in the wilderness, someone is shouting, get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him. So John the Baptist showed up in the desert and told everybody, Turn back to God and be baptized, then your sins will be forgiven. From all Judea and Jerusalem, crowds of people went to John. They 
told how sorry they were for their sins, and he baptized them in the Jordan River. John wore clothes made of camel's hair. He had a leather strap around his waist and ate grasshoppers and wild honey. John also told the people, someone more powerful is going to come after me. I am not good enough even to stoop down and untie his sandals. I am not good enough to even stoop down and untie his sandals. He was talking about Jesus. I want to speak to you and preach for the next few moments from the thought, getting the big picture, getting the big picture. It was John the Baptist who baptized those who were trying to cling closer to God even before Jesus started his ministry. John the Baptist was the forerunner of this gospel. And he said, somebody is going to come after me and I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals. A lot of people I can imagine during that day did not want to hear the gospel preached by John the Baptist because of how he presented himself, how he dressed, what he ate. He ate wild locusts and, and wild honey in the wilderness. And we should never judge a book by its cover. We should, we should never have a preconceived notion of how we might be blessed because if you really think about it, you don't know who's going to bless you. You don't know how God is going to bless you. Sometimes blessings come in presentations that you would never imagine. But still in all, we cannot judge a book by its cover. John the Baptist was shouting in a wilderness. And even by virtue of what we have seen these last few weeks right before our very eyes, concerning a health care crisis, a pandemic, and then concerning police brutality unto death. We are living in a wilderness. We are living in an economic wilderness. We are trying to find our way through a sociological wilderness. And last but not least, we are living in a nation that is undergoing a spiritual wilderness situation. But Jesus came after John the Baptist and John the Baptist said, Jesus is going to come. And if we are going to get out of this wilderness, we need to focus our eyes on the principles of Jesus. Jesus just wasn't spiritual in the sense that he was compassionate. But the same way he was compassionate was the same way how he had a penchant for equality and justice. And if there's one thing we've learned, we have not gone and we have not been to the place we have not got to the promised land yet by virtue of what we have seen we've seen a lot in the last few weeks and one of the things that concerns me about protests is that I'm all for protest I'm ready to protest at any time you know me I've been protesting for the last 25 years but one thing that I have learned and what I am concerned about is how people are becoming very judgmental of each other based on whether they protest or based on whether they don't protest. It is, it is not your job, at a, particularly at a time like this, to be critical of somebody else because they decide to protest or they decide to stay home. There are many ways to engage in activism. If you want to get out in the street, protest out in the street, march in the street, demonstrate in the street. But sometimes, some people want to stay home because they've got to take care of their families. Not everybody can protest. Sometimes people will make calls to influential people. Some other people might write letters. There's more than one way of skinning a cat, and there are more than one ways of demonstrating your activism. And after the protests are over, and after the marching is over, and after the demonstrating is over, there's got to be something more. We've got to engage in changing of policy because this racism is so systemic so pervasive in America that sometimes you see it and you don't know that you're looking at it. It's invisible sometimes. I'll give you an example. In my neighborhood, my neighborhood was heavily gentrified and, and because it's been gentrified, the complexion of my neighborhood has changed dramatically, if you know what I mean. And then a couple of weeks ago, all of my neighbors who don't look like me came from the protests and I'm seeing more white folks holding up Black Lives Matter signs than black folks. But when they moved in, they displaced black folks because the rent went up. It's so pervasive, so grained into the American culture that sometimes we're looking right at it 
and don't realize we're seeing racism. If black lives matter concerning police brutality, then black lives matter concerning housing, black lives matter concerning healthcare, and concerning education, it just can't be about one thing. We have seen so many things within the last couple of weeks that it's blistering to our eye and sometimes it comes too fast, but through it all, we've got to realize that Jesus is still in charge. And for those of us who are trying to be disciples of Jesus, we know that change is going to come. But we also know that a larger change is going to come. Have I got a witness? It's not just about social change, but if we're going to be disciples of Jesus, we need to engage in spiritual change at the same time. Yeah, if you protest, God bless you. If you don't protest, God still bless you. And I'm reminded because of what happened to George Floyd on Memorial Day, that we've got a long way to go. And we've heard this story again and again and again. We heard about Amadou Diallo, Eleanor Bumpus, Sean Bell, Eric Garner, and the list goes on and on and on. And we ask ourselves the question, when is it going to stop? But the answer is, it's not going to stop, unfortunately, unless and until there's not only criminal consequences, but economic consequences. There, there is a law in the New York State Constitution that says that labor union pension funds cannot be toyed or, or messed with. And one of the things that we're reminded of in a case like George Floyd, there will be a criminal trial in just a little while. But after the criminal case is resolved, there'll also be a civil case. And more often than not, the family members of those who are lost to the hands of the police are given millions of dollars. Millions of dollars, by the way, that are paid for by your tax dollars and my tax dollars. Imagine if in a civil case, whenever a policeman or a policewoman or a member of law enforcement kills an unarmed civilian, the civil money should not come from tax dollars, but the civil money would come from the police pension fund, whether it's citywide or statewide, and then a cop will think about it twice. He'll think twice. She'll think twice about killing an unarmed civilian if they know that their pension money is not going to come through. We've got to do a whole lot of things to make this thing stop and go away. But like Jeremiah Wright said, because racism is so ingrained into the cake, you can't change the cake. You've got to bake another cake. And that's when change comes. But no real change can happen unless there's spiritual change and moral change. And on our way to justice and equality, we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. During this whole pandemic of COVID-19, it has changed our lives dramatically. We have to wear masks when we're out in public. Some wear gloves when they're out in public. And one thing, other thing that I've noticed about this whole social distancing affair, it has got to the point when you walk into an apartment building or a government agency building, you've got to walk in one way and then walk out another way. Did you hear what I said? When you go into a building nowadays because of COVID-19, you've got to enter one way and then exit out another way. It kind of reminds me of my relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because when I first came to Jesus, I was one way. But then after I met Jesus, I was another way. Have I got a witness? When I first came to Jesus, I was just a sinner. But after I met Jesus, I was a sinner saved by grace. When I first came to Jesus, I was stressed, but after I encountered Jesus, I may still be stressed, but I'm blessed at the same time. When I first came to Jesus, I was confused, but after I met him, my mind was clear. When I first came to Jesus, I was hopeless, but after I met him, I'm now hopeful. 
When I first came to Jesus, I was a wreck. But after I met him, he told me everything will be all right. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was. I was weary and worn and sad. In him I found a resting place. And guess what? He has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give the living waters thirsty ones. Stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. And my thirst was quenched. My soul revived. And now I live in him. During the midst of... Of all of this confusion, all of these complex days that we've never seen in our lifetime, sometimes take a step back and then get the picture and find out what the next move is going to be after the protests, after the marching, after the demonstrating. God has yet another move for justice and equality. May the Lord ever bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to open the doors of the church if there's somebody here, if there's somebody under the sound of my voice who does not have a church home or if you've never been baptized. We'd be glad to see you at the Brown Memorial Baptist Church. You can visit our website, brownmemorialbaptist.org, brownmemorialbaptist.org. Or you can give us a call at area code 718-638-6121. It doesn't matter where you are in this country or throughout this world. Your life should belong to God through Jesus. And if there's one, the doors of this church always remain open. May God bless you. Now, eternal God, we ask that as we leave our collective places and spaces, that you would be with us in spirit and in truth. Give us strength as we continue to work for justice and equality in this country and throughout this world. We ask, oh God, that even though there are days when we get weary, we ask for your power. We ask for your strength. But most of all, we're thankful for your grace and for your mercy. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Bad language, just dead.